Hello YouTube, how is everybody? I have a super special bike to show you guys today. Needs no introduction. I got my hands on an R1. And I think if you've been following me for any length of time, you will know how special this bike is to me. So I am unbelievably grateful to be able to borrow one for a few weeks. And in order to do it the most justice that I can do it, I have taken it to my favorite roads in Wales. I know deep down it probably wants to be on track, um, but that's not happening. And I want to really quickly point out that I wanted to keep this bike clean. I had every intention of keeping this bike super clean and respecting it, and it's not happened. It's rained most of today, um, and it's dirty. And I feel terrible about that. Most of the time I will joke and say that bikes look better when they're dirty, but I don't think that's the case for this one. I think it just looks sad. We're gonna go do some little country roads. If you guys have watched all of my videos, you will recognize this road. I've done it quite a few times. It is my favorite road, I think in the United Kingdom and not for speed, but you can't really go fast on this road. I just think it's absolutely stunning here. The only problem is I don't think the R1 likes it and um, I should know better because this is actually the place where I killed my R1 and I thought it would be kind of healing to take this R1 to this place that I love so much and also prove to myself that I was just unlucky with mine and that most R1s are quite happy to just do whatever you tell them to do. Maybe not the case, anyway. So I am really, really relieved and grateful to have been given this bike to borrow for a couple of weeks from Yamaha. And um, the reason I'm relieved is because this is the last one. This is it. Yamaha have apparently stopped making them now. That's, that's it, they're discontinued. This is the last R1. There will be no more, maybe at least for the foreseeable future. That is it for R1s. And um, when that news came out, I was super upset because this particular model of bike means so, so much to me. This is probably my all time favorite. This is the bike that I loved when I was getting into motorcycling, when I was buying all the magazines and drawing over the bikes that I couldn't have or afford. I just kind of had tunnel vision towards R1s. And I remember being like wildly discouraged from that because our ones are terrible, terrible beasts that will spit you off and kill you and all of that. But little 17 year old me was obsessed with our ones. So it did take me a while, but eventually I did get my R1. And I had our ones for um, maybe like five years before I got my RR instead. But the R ones are still a huge part of my identity. Obviously my name is R1 Liz on everything. I haven't changed that despite not having one because I still really, really love the bike and there's no point changing it. So finding out that that's it, no more R1s was kind of devastating. And even though there's nothing I can do about that, I'm so happy to get to spend some time on the last one because I'm not going to be able to buy one of these and keep the bikes that I've got. So that's not happening. Okay, this is normally my favorite place to stop and take photos, but it is so windy, I've given up. My tripod just kept falling over. That is what I get for spending 20 pounds on Amazon. One day I will upgrade. Today is not that day. Do you know how expensive it is to ride one of these around? Every time I stop at a petrol station, it's 20 quid. It doesn't matter if I've done five miles or 50 miles, it's 20 quid. I know there are more dignified things that I could be doing with an R1, but obviously this is the sort of thing that I normally do anyway. But it wasn't. When I first started riding, I was much more into fast roads and big European sweeping bends and stuff like that. It was actually when I got my R1 that I started enjoying more of this sort of thing. And my R1 wasn't loving it. And that's when I started running into problems with it. So I got a 2018 model R1, which is the one just before this. This is the facelift version. And 
that was the first one I think that started having a lot of fancy electronics so it was a treat to ride it. I got to play with all of these little toys and I had a great time. Please don't run out in front of me, I'll cry. But it didn't like touring and then one day in Wales it cut out completely and it wouldn't stop and it left me stranded in the middle of nowhere. Well, in the middle of a pub in the middle of nowhere. I had to find a complete stranger with a van who very kindly drove it back home for me. Well, we found out that it had somehow just spat out its fuel pump of all things. Like, why would it do that? So I thought that's, that's as much a sign as anything. So I got rid of it and I got the RR because um, this one didn't feel like enough of a change to warrant spending the money. So I got something different. And I'm not going to say I haven't looked back because I have looked back and I really, really miss the R1. If I had the money, I would go out and buy an R1 because I've spoken to a lot of people about the experience that I have with mine and they're all saying, oh, that's really, really weird. I want a super reliable. That doesn't sound like the kind of thing that would normally happen. So that's um, kind of what I'm proving to myself on this. This is going to go and do the same stuff and it's going to have a great time and it's not going to break down and I'm going to really enjoy it and it's like a healing thing for me. This is the experience that I should have had on mine and I don't need to go and do a track day on it to tell you guys that it's a good track bike. I did do a track day on my R1. I did a track day on both of my R1s and obviously it's really really fast and it's really responsive and it's everything you ask it to do but the problem we've got is that they're no longer available as road bikes and that's the sad thing because these bikes are great road bikes they are so much fun this one's a little bit spicier than i remember i've messed around with the settings a little bit just because I can't be bothered to deal with an attitude out here so it's in C mode at the moment and I've softened up the suspension ever so slightly because I was getting battered but once I figured out how to make it behave the way I wanted it to behave it was it's flawless and I had like an emotional moment on the way here when I finally started to gel with this one and yeah, I thought how sad it is that it's being discontinued and that we're going to be left with like R7s and no offence, but it's not the same, is it? But despite the issues that I had with my R1, it's R1s that made me the rider that I am today. It was R1s that taught me to be confident and do what I want despite what other people say. It was R1s that taught me perseverance which seems a bit strange, but it is. It was our ones that taught me to ride smoothly and carefully, but they also taught me to ride fast and they taught me to manage big bikes. And of course it was our ones that built me up my um, little social media reputation. Obviously our one Liz came from our ones. They started my cartoon career because I was getting such an interesting experience from being a girl on an R1 and it inspired so many of my first cartoons and eventually it built me my business so I have to thank the R1s for that because without having that inspiration I wouldn't be where I am today so I have a lot to thank this model for and yeah I'm happy that I get to spend some time with one before well, they're not going to vanish forever, obviously, they're still going to be available second-hand, but at least before they vanish from um, the UK press fleet, which is where I'm borrowing this one from. Ooh, ooh, which one do we want? The pothole or the sand? Nice. Very nice. I can't 
find the fuel gauge on the dash and I don't know if that's me being exceptionally dense. I have no idea how much petrol is in it at any given time. Basically, every time I see a petrol station, particularly in Wales, I stop and fill it up. Please don't. Thank you. Do fuel gauges get removed on this model? Have I got it in track mode? I don't think I have. I found the option to put it in track mode and I selected street mode, so it's in street mode as far as I'm aware. Track mode I don't think shows you speed. Oh no! I'm just gonna be here for a little while. It looks like the um, post van has got stuck in the ditch. And I would like to say that probably my favourite noise in the whole wide world is the noise that this bike makes when you pin the throttle in second. Isn't that magical? I want to walk down the aisle to that noise. I want them to play that noise at my funeral. So I'm coming towards the end of the fun part of this route and I'm going to try and come up with some kind of conclusion to this video because I'm not, I'm not demonstrating an R1 for you. This is not what people that want to buy R1s are going to do, so it's kind of pointless. Um, to show it in this environment, what I really wanted to do was just take lots and lots of photographs for personal reasons so that I can remember the R1 so that you know I have this I did this I had the R1 I've got these beautiful photographs of my favorite bike in my favorite scenery so if you guys this is just kind of like oh pretty bike pretty views pretty place yeah pretty roads everything um, and I hope that you've enjoyed that and I, I don't know if anyone else is going to feel as sad as me, as sad as I feel about the fact that this is it for this model, that they're not going to be continuing it, that there's no more, you know, every three or four years you get excited about what's going to be next, the new model, the new version. Is it going to look better? Is it going to look weird? How are they going to modernize it? What new features is it going to get? How is it going to compare to all of the other sports bikes? Like there's not going to be any more of that and that's so sad because that was genuinely like a huge part of my life and then kind of seeing the new ones come out and aspiring to own that one day like when I got my 2018 R1 I honestly didn't believe that I was going to end up with that bike and it was such a huge achievement for me to be able to get it obviously a lot of things kind of fell into place that allowed that to happen but just owning it was an amazing experience and yes i can go out and get a second hand one and i'm okay with that because i feel like i've reached a point in my life where i have a bike that is no longer current that is and probably always will be my favorite bike and it's not actually this one it's the kind of 2012 2014 the facelift version of the first of the big bangs with the underseated exhaust but specifically the facelift version and I believe that's because when I first started riding, that was the current R1. And so I don't think I'm ever going to grow out of that. I think I'm always going to look at that bike and think that is the most beautiful thing on God's green earth. And one day I will buy that bike, but that's going to be as good as it gets because I'm not going to be in a position to go out and buy a brand new R1 because there won't be any anymore. And I hope that somewhere in Yamaha's future there will be something that is comparable to the R1 that you can buy I mean maybe maybe they aren't ending R1s forever maybe there's gonna be like a v-twin R1 maybe there's gonna be a v1 who knows but those rumors have not surfaced yet I remain hopeful I know that we're probably gonna get an R9 but I just don't see that having the same vibe as the R1. I see that kind of being a slightly bigger R7 because it seems like what they're doing is they're just recycling the engines that they've got already so that they can make several different models that share 
the major components so obviously with the mt07 engine you've got the r7 you've got the tenere 700 you've got the xsr 700 all sharing the same bits and pieces i do wonder if the r9 is just going to be a dressed up mt09 i guess we'll find out but for now that's that's it from this one and i guess i can't be the only person going through this there's been many many motorcycle models that have been discontinued i mean was it last year we saw the end of the jixas apart from the little one two five which i'm not sure if it really counts as a jixa obviously the 600 and the 750 kind of fizzled out and disappeared and then the thousand was gone and that was sad i i loved the gsxr 1000 a lot not as much as this but again it's just one bike less that you know in five or ten years when you've got a lot of money all of a sudden you can't just walk into a shop and purchase you can't pick the color that you want and pick all the accessories that you want and have a nice man in a van deliver it to your front door with a massive bill and that's that's a life experience that you kind of want so I'm obviously not the only person that's going through this but if you're going through this and you want to start like a little support group let me know I am down for that but I also kind of wonder if maybe it's a nice thing that it's ended where it's ended. It's ended on its own terms. It's ended with this bike, which is absolutely flawless. I love this bike. I think this bike is visually stunning. It's taken the 2015 model and made it prettier, made it better, made it feel more refined. And then, I don't know, maybe before it ruins itself, it's gone. And this model's done everything that I needed it to do for myself. This, this bike is responsible for so much of my personal growth and development as a rider. So maybe it's like closing the end of a really nice book. I don't know. Is that a little bit too soppy for a YouTube video? Probably. So I hope you guys have enjoyed this video of me rattling around on roads that I probably shouldn't be rattling around on with an R1. It wouldn't be me if I wasn't going down inappropriate roads. I'm gonna get back and I'm actually gonna clean it because um, yeah I feel really really bad that it's got dirty. I did not want this one to get dirty. This one is special. This one deserves better. Uh, what can you do? It's Wales. If it's not raining in Wales, that's probably a sign that something worse is about to happen. And I will catch up with you later. Thank you for watching. Goodbye.